Welcome to StartupRad.io, your podcast and YouTube blog covering the German startup scene with news, interviews, and live events. Hello and welcome, everybody. This is Joe from StartupRad.io, your startup podcast and YouTube blog from Germany, again bringing you a subject matter expert interview. As so frequently, this interview is sponsored by Startup Raven, the easiest way for startups to find investors and corporation partners, meaning corporates. Go down here in the show notes or go to www.startupraven.com. This time, I have Tara here, who is a political analyst. I'll solve pretty soon why she is here, but first, I would like to welcome her. Hey, how you doing? Hi, Joe. I'm happy to be here. Totally my pleasure. We have to tell that you are an employee and political analyst of the company called Panalis that has been a guest of StartupRate.io in the past. So I'll link the interview with your two bosses down here in the show notes. The reason why you are here is that on March 18th, the 100 days of the new coalition of the Olaf Scholz government are over. And that's usually a time uh, the press uh, takes off the gloves and looks back what they've achieved. And we thought, oh, we take this milestone, the first 100 days, and have a look into what is going on in the German political system relevant to the startups. But first, let us talk a little bit about what the German parliamentary system is. Yes, yeah, sure. So um, it's always good to look at the political system of Germany before um, doing an analysis. So first of all, uh, Germany um, is a federal republic and a parliamentary democracy. And like in any democracy, the power always stems from the people. So the German people um, elect their representatives and um, the Germans are able to participate in two elections, one every five years and one every four years. Um, every five years, the people can elect the state parliaments, which then elect the state governments, which then send delegates to the so-called Bundesrat. The Bundesrat um, is one of the German legislative bodies And um, in the Bundesrat, every state of Germany is represented and has a say in matter of legislations and stuff like that. And, um, well, it's something like the U.S. Senate. So basically, that's where the states have their voice. But compared to the U.S., it's not like two senators from each state, but... Well, it's kind of um, a proportional... Yeah, representation of the state. So the biggest states have more representatives in the Bundesrat. And um, it defers to the Senate because um, it's not like a second chamber. It's its own constitutional body. So that you have to keep in mind when uh, talking about the German Bundesrat. And uh, well, its main tasks include uh, approving and vetoing uh, acts of legislation to that. Which also means that they don't bring forward any bills. They just have to decide what Bundestag, the German parliament, did. And they can say thumbs up, thumbs down, or, hey, guys, let's do it again. Yes, exactly. That's how it works. So uh, it's the Bundestag that actually comes up with the bills and the acts of legislation. And uh, the German people are able to vote for the Bundestag every four years um, in the parliamentary elections. And uh, currently, uh, the Bundestag consists of 736 members, and it was just very recently um, elected in September 2021. And uh, yeah, its main tasks include electing the federal chancellor of Germany. And um, well, as we already said, the lawmaking, as it is the main body of legislation. Exactly. On, on December 8th, they elected 
all of Scholz. So that means not like in the US, you directly di uh, elect the chancellor. We learned from uh, from our past mistakes and now you first have to uh, elect the politicians who are hopefully a little bit saner than the public and they have to elect the chancellor. That brings us a little bit to the electoral system. I, I would... I think we could spend like a complete podcast just on this, but let's cut it short and say you have two votes. One of them is like proportionately um, for, for the party you elect. And the second one is like uh, for the direct candidate of your uh, county, your electoral area. Um, how is it called properly in English? Wahlkreis? Um, oh, what's it called? I just know it's the plurality vote here. Um, <laughs> ah, election uh, uh, district. Yeah, electoral district, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> now that we have figured that out. Um, so basically, um, and if you get more uh, direct candidates through the districts, you get more mandates, meaning the, the, the Bundestag is growing, but we won't get into this topic because it, it's a little bit strange. It's hard to understand. Plus, uh, there are um, steady initiatives to limit that and it may change over time. Yeah, it's, it's really complicated. Uh, you're right about that. Um, what might be good to know is uh, about the 5% hurdle you have to get into the Bundestag as a party. Um, so it's quite difficult um, if your party doesn't get a total of 5% of all of the votes. Um, your party might not at all be admitted into the Bundestag, um, which makes it quite difficult for just one party to get the absolute majority of votes. So usually um, a coalition of parties is needed to form the government. Mm -hmm. And speaking about parties... We do have the, okay, now there come a lot of uh, 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 names, abbreviations, uh, three-letter acronyms, TLAs, but just take it. Uh, we'll explain a little bit, but basically that means the political parties. The SPD, it's uh, middle left, I would say. Uh, you may remember um, Gerhard Schröder, Olaf Scholz, they're from SPD. Then the FDP, the liberals, um, they have the Vice Chancellor Christian Lindner, who may play a role later on, the Green Party, obvious reason for the name, CDU, CSU, it's a uh, middle right. I would say uh, you may remember Helmut Kohl and Angela Merkel, chancellors by them, the AFD, the very right wing party, and the Linke, the left in the Bundestag. I think we have them now all sorted out, at least mentioned here. Yes, I think so too. So those are the most important yeah. parties right now, and I guess that's it. D don't don't get us wrong. There are like a zillion more parties around here, but they're the one currently present. Plus, SPD, FDP, and the Greens are forming a coalition government. So they wrote a big contract. That is what we want to do, and that's why we are talking here, right? Yes, exactly. So this coalition paper, um, it took quite some time uh, to be debated about. And um, this coalition of parties is actually uh, quite major because uh, I don't think it has been like this before. Um, so SPD with FDP uh, is just uh, kind of historical for Germany. Um, but yes, they did come up with uh, some really good ideas. You do have to talk about that. Yes, exactly. Plus, we may add for the time frame. So the election was going on on September 26th. And if you have in mind that Olaf Scholz was elected chancellor on December 8th, you can guess that they have been negotiating for almost two and a half months there to form the coalition government. So there's a lot of um, thought 
that went into that. We also linked the coalition contract 2021 till 2025 here in the in the show notes. Or if you're consuming this on some mobile device, there will be a link to our blog post and there will be the link to the PDF. But please keep in mind it's German only. That said, um, you are here today because you can tell us a lot about the German parties and their position on startups. And we're talking about here what we will refer to as the coalition government, as we said, SPD, FDP, and the Greens, or just the Scholz government. Yes, exactly. That is kind of my job. Um, at Panalis, uh, I do political analysis. And uh, I've taken a um, really good look at the positions of uh, the coal coalition government and uh, the coalition contract and uh, their position to startups and startup politics in general. Great. And what did you find for us? So um, I guess it's really uh, good to start prior to the parliamentary elections, because um, if you take a look at the election programs of the governing parties, um, you kind of see that well, uh, contrary to the beliefs, um, they did have very similar ideas and approaches in terms of startup politics. So um, I think it would be um, of more value to kind of highlight the differences between the parties. Um, and you have to say they there are really not that many differences. So starting with uh, the SPD as, well, the former party of the working class, you can say that they're really big on creating jobs and, of course, making um, Germany like a leading startup location, um, as well as um, highlighting the importance of diversity and social justice for startups. And um, with that, they um, wanted to try to uh, create a culture of second chances. So um, meaning that people who try to create startups um, that failed, well, get a second chance um, uh, and going in that direction, but as well uh, supporting women or companies of common interest, social interest. Um, and uh, FTP, um, well, one thing that stands out with the FTP is uh, their ambition to create the so-called Deutsche Transfergemeinschaft, an English-German transfer community, as um, an institution, a self-governing institution supporting uh, technology and social innovations that is uh, supposed to be um, a connection point for universities and businesses. And also, um, this differs quite a lot from the other um, points, is they wanted to create digital freedom zones where um, startups could work um, in peace with fewer reg regulations from the government um, and so on. And then, um, of course, we have the Greens, who um, really... Well, of course, uh, keeping up with uh, the environmental aspect of the party um, wanted to support the ecological aspect of startup politics um, with funding of green techs, um, with building up the ecological potential of technologies, but also, um, and with this kind of um, keeping in frame with uh, the SPD reducing disadvantages. But here um, they also took a closer look at supporting uh, people with a migration background. And they also um, wanted to stand in for, um, an, well, kind of also like an innovation agency with by the name of DE Nova. So, yeah, those are the major points that differ um, from the other points of the parties. Um, but in general, you can say they do have quite a lot in common. Um, and they also have in common their coalition contract. So what they are planning for the next five years until the next general election. Um, 
I was wondering what is in the part of the coalition contract that may concern the startups. Yeah, so there are some major points, um, some major focus points um, about startup politics uh, in the coalition contract. And um, one thing that stands out is uh, the supporting of pioneering business fields. So um, with modernization um, and well, everything that has to come for the future, uh, the new government, of course, wants to support um, business businesses like artificial intelligence or fields uh, with quantum technology, cybersecurity, robotics, hydrogen, um, everything that has to do uh, with uh, the ecological aspect like sustainable mobility, bioeconomy, or a circular economy. So um, that's a big, big topic for uh, the coalition. But um, also um, planned for the next years are so-called one-stop shops. And um, these are um, supposed to be sort of contact points for startups, for startup advice, for uh, general support, for um, help uh, in matters of registration um, with the intention to minimize minimize sorry bureaucracy and um the the real aim is to um kind of make it possible for startups uh, to be able to found a startup um within 24 hours so uh that is uh, really ambitious and uh, we'll have to see how that works out because currently um well, founding a startup takes many months and, uh, yeah, that's 24 hours. That's, that's really ambitious. <laughs> and then um, we also have, um, yeah. We may tell our audience that basically um, you have to uh, go to a notary, either get the standard contract or uh, like a, a, a individualized contract prepared by a notary or lawyer and then uh, you go to the notary there's an official act you'll read it to all the co-founders the complete contract if you have a really complex company you may want to bring snacks uh, usually if there's a big contract there will be some um some uh, sect uh, German sparkling wine around, and then uh, you can sit there sometimes for hours and listen to the notary when he reads everything everybody understands, then everybody signs, and then it goes to the public registry. And then at the public registry, you also have to wait for quite some time. And then at one point you get an invoice because you have been registered. But personal experience, that can take somewhere between one to three months, depending on where you are right now, meaning there are some, the public registry are always part of the local court, depending if they're very busy. Plus, uh, if people are on vacation and uh, there has been a specific situation during the times of Corona, I'm sure they could not work uh, full power there. So it was a little bit uh, specific for me, but it took two to three months just for me to set up the companies here. Yeah, so uh, that's one thing that the new coalition definitely uh, wants to change. So uh yeah, making that process faster than it is right now. Um, but also um, with uh, coming back to the point of social justice, um, this is a thing that um, all parties uh, really seem uh, to want to change is um, the support for women in startup politics as well as people with a migration background. Um, but also supporting social startups. Um, and uh, this they want to achieve with special scholarships or uh, funding programs, um, especially for females or um, yeah, making a special quota for females um, in investment committees, uh, things like that, just to kind of make everything a little bit more um, equal because um, if you look at the quota right now for women in a start in startup field, it's 
really quite low uh, at 15 to 16 percent, I think. Um, so, yeah, a lot can be done um, here. Um, and also they want to, or the new government wants to uh, give startups better access for uh, to data and for uh, research results uh, to enable new innovative business models and social innovations because, um, I mean, you have to keep up with the times and digitization, I'm sorry, and modernization um, are really... Uh, coming in the flow right now so um you have to keep up with that and um then of course finance is always a big plus when you're working with artificial intelligence machine learning you need a lot of data and if you just make up data your ai never learns uh, the right thing so um that's basically where you need a lot of data the more the better sorry for the interruption go ahead <laughs> no problem um so as I was saying, um, also finance um, is also a, a big topic um, and uh, which is also re really important uh, for both sides. <laughs> so um, the new government um, wants to mobilize private capital uh, for financing and um, they uh, want to use institutional investors like uh, insurance companies or uh, the pension funds to um, be able to create better funding for startups because um, if you just, well, think about it, there's just a lot of money sitting there in these insurance um, pots that could be used for, um, well, startup funding, for example. Um, and then also uh, connecting to the financing topic is um, the KFW. Um, the KFW is the German state-owned uh, investment and development bank. And uh, the coalition wants to strengthen and develop the KFW. So they kind of want to make the KFW um, the important innovation and investment agency in Germany. Uh, it is already quite important. You have to say uh, that as well. But make it even more important and... Um, well, give it more money to be able to create more funds. Uh, yeah. And um, then a last point. Um, we may add mm -hmm. for, for our audience that KFW is really a big organization. That means they're, most of what they're doing is dishing out loans, very low interest loans for many many different things so basically if you're building a house you do a low energy you put some solar power on top of it you can get a lo uh, low interest loan from them if you're a farmer buying a big tractor you contact kfw businesses can specialize uh, can get specialized loans export financing germany has a very large export um export driven industry all that stuff is done either by kfw or another bank within this group. So they're very important in many, many different aspects. Go ahead. Yes, exactly. Um, then uh, I wanted to add as a last point, um, the relevance of the government, because uh, the government has decided to uh, step in as a contracting authority um, even more and uh, increase the access to public tenders. So, um, it wants to make it, especially for startups that go in the direction of uh, the government agenda and um, like edu tech startups, uh, must make it possible for them to, uh, yeah, get jobs um, and, well, get funding from the government directly. So, uh those are really the points that uh, stand out um, with the coalition contract in terms of startup politics. And that is basically, and that is basically the guidelines around uh, which what they are planning, like the, the 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 bigger picture. And do we already see some initiatives? For example, we had the person in charge of the ten billion startup program here in an interview. Is this going to continue? 
Uh, yes, of course. So uh, that's not something that will just be forgotten overnight or <laughs> overridden. Um, the startup program of the former government will, of course, still be intact. Um, also referred to uh, as the Future Fund. And uh, the new government plans on just further developing it. Um, because it's a really great initiative and um, for example, the new government wants to reserve parts of the future fund uh, specifically for female founders. So um, there are some ideas in place for the 10 billion startup program, but um, yeah, startups or uh, whatever, so startups won't have to fear any fundamental changes. It will still be there. The money will still be there um, for funding. Mm -hmm. What I was wondering, uh, it, there have been also some rumors um, of a French and German initiative in the European Union to invest in startups. There was an article on the semiconductor investments the European Union wants to do in order to produce semiconductors in Europe again. There should also be some money earmarked for startups, plus the vice chancellor and finance minister um, Lindner also wanted to set some money aside for uh, startups. Can you talk a little bit about that? And of course, um, not all of this is final. So we're talking about potential scenarios here mostly. Yes, there uh, is an, well, a will, <laughs> let's say, in the Ministry of Finance um, to uh, contribute $1 billion to the so-called uh, European uh, Tech and Champions Initiative. Um, and yeah, this is the European Tech Champions Initiative is a pan-European initiative to um, fund scale-ups. So, um, yeah, there's going to be, if this all uh, really is going to uh, set, be set in place, um, 10 to 20 funds um, from, um, I think it's 16 European countries um, for scale-ups in later stages. So um, I think that's really great that all these European countries uh, want to come together and Uh, contribute to, um, well, scale-ups, which are also really important for the startup industry. Yes, there has been some um, complaints about like the chain of financing. So very early on, you start with your own money, then come the business angels, then come the early stage fund. And at one point, you are considered to be a scale-up. So you need bigger money, more serious money. And there used to be, or there still is, potential gap and that's what they're trying to fix here yeah exactly okay now that we talked such a lot about politics bottom line is there is um there is a program to have 10 billion invested in startups there is an additional political will to invest 1 billion more in the european tech initiative plus um there is some interest to make startups foundable within 24 hours. Did I forget anything important here? Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, maybe that uh, new government also wants to uh, found a new agency um, and create a new law specifically for, um, yeah, a so-called Bureaucracy Relief Act. Um, which is to, uh, well, fasten or develop uh, the reduction of uh, bureaucracy in politics. Um, and this new agency, um, is that what the FDP and the Greens wanted? So um, an agency, an institution that is independent um, and kind of, brings together uh, universities and research to be used for startups, um, for creating business ideas, and um, so that none of the ideas 
or anything will just go to waste. Um, so these are uh, some of the plans that the new government has. Um, and time will show how this new law, this new agency, and generally uh, the will for uh, the politics to um, take a step ahead with uh, startups will actually um, yeah, set, be set in action. Um, for everybody who doesn't understand this idea of an agency, we may just highlight that MP3 was actually invented in Germany, but Uh, the big money was made outside of Germany and Germany wants to keep investing in basic research to turn up hopefully stuff like MP3 again, but then want to also commercialize it within the country. Yeah, exactly. Well, Tara, thank you very much. That was a very small trip into what is politically going on in Germany, what to expect from the next government. And really, hopefully, we'll have you back in some time and talk about what the guys, meaning the coalition government, actually realized here. Yes, it was really a pleasure talking about politics, taking a look at the new government, at the coalition contract, And uh, kind of seeing that um, expectations of startups were really met um, in the coalition contract. But of course, uh, there is still uh, much to do, but that's just uh, how politics work. And um, yeah, as I said, time will show what will actually be changed and uh, how startups can profit from the politics. Well, great. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure having you as a guest. Have a good day. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. That's all, folks. Find more news, streams, events, and interviews at www.startuprad.io. Remember, sharing is caring.